Fora TV. The world is thinking. It's not really surprising that so many people have lost hope. If I just think of the chimpanzees, when I first went to Gombe in 1960, uh, Gombe is on the eastern shore of Lake Tanganyika, that long skinny lake up the middle of Africa. And you could go along the east shore and it was chimpanzee habitat everywhere, just a few couple of little towns and a few villages. You could climb the hills and look away from the lake, chimpanzee habitat as far as you could see. And then in the early 90s, I had the opportunity to fly in a small plane over this whole area. And although I knew that there was deforestation outside the park, I was totally unprepared for the almost total deforestation, with the only trees left in the really steep uh, gullies and valleys where even desperate farmers couldn't try to cultivate, where even desperate women looking for firewood couldn't scramble. And I, I'll come back to how we tried to do something about this, but it's just to say that the Gombe chimpanzees are now, or were then, caught in a small island, it's only 30 square miles, and they were totally surrounded by cultivated fields. They were trapped, less than 100, not a sufficient gene pool, almost certainly, for long-term viability. And across Africa, where there were way over a million in 1960 when I began, we don't know exactly, but based on the amount of forest cover across their range, across 25 nations, um, today 300,000 at the most and probably less. Due to habitat destruction, the continual growth of human populations and the illegal commercial bushmeat trade, that's not subsistence hunting, it's made possible by the logging companies that go deep into the heart of the last remaining rainforests. And even if they practice sustainable logging, open up the forests with roads, and this provides access for the hunters from the cities with their more sophisticated weapons. And they're shooting everything, even mothers with babies, and elephants, and gorillas, and antelopes, and monkeys, and birds, anything that can be cut up and smoked and sold, not only in the local markets, but into the big cities where the urban elite will pay more for this than a piece of chicken or goat. It's their culture, they say. And some of it is even shipped to African communities in exile in other parts of the world. Totally unsustainable. And very difficult to do anything about because large amounts of money are involved. This is a big trade. And as you know, once money gets involved in something, it gets harder and progressively harder to to control, particularly when, as in this case, there are quite high up politicians involved. And we all know about this. That's not just Africa. It's everywhere. The vested interests, the pressure that's put upon people in power by uh, companies, by corporations, by those making money. So the plight of the chimpanzee is just one example of what's happening to animal species around the world. And not surprising that so many people seem to have given up hope. Not surprising that so many people ask me, Jane, you can't really have hope, not after you've seen what you've seen. And that's why I wrote this recent book that Congressman Polis was just mentioning. Hope for animals and their world. How endangered species are being rescued from the brink, the brink of extinction.